Hi, uh, today uh, we will have our second lecture on this module on condition assessment of uh, concrete structures. In the first uh, lecture, we covered the service life, service and exposure conditions and then visual inspection uh, techniques and what are the things we should be worried about uh, while going for a visual inspection. And also we looked at testing of concrete at site and today in this lecture, we will be looking at uh, testing of concrete in laboratory. Uh, this could be uh, on, on uh, specimens which are prepared in the laboratory or also on specimens which are extracted uh, or obtained from the field structures. But the point is the testing will be in laboratory. Now first test uh, which we are going to discuss is uh, this resistivity test which is a Wenner 4 probe resistivity test. Uh, as you see on the picture on the top left, you can see that uh, or top right this is the uh, how the test is being done and you can see this four uh, points uh, which are in contact with the concrete surface and the schematic is shown on the left side where you can see that there are lines of current flow between the two outermost uh, probes and then uh, you can see there are equipotential lines which are indicated by these dotted line or curves and here also. And then uh, the idea is you measure the potential uh, across the two, uh, uh, two uh, inner probes. Uh, so pass a current through the outer probes uh, between the two outer probes and measure the uh, voltage or potential difference across the two uh, inner probes and that is the idea. Now what it is or how is it helpful is the resistivity which is measured can be related to the concrete quality or in other words uh, you know the resistivity of the concrete uh, influences the corrosion rate which uh, rate of corrosion which can happen in concrete structures or rate of movement of any uh, you know uh, deleterious elements uh, into the concrete like chlorides. So this can be a good indicator for many other uh, potential deterioration mechanisms. So the table is given at the bottom left on the uh, criteria which can be used uh, based on the resistivity or the surface resistivity which we measure. We can see whether the concrete belongs to good normal poor or very poor quality. But I would say one thing here even though this uh, specification uh, or this criteria provides to decide whether good, normal, poor or very poor, but you have to be uh, careful uh, on maybe because uh, good for a particular case could be just a normal uh, condition quality for another case. So that also have to be sometimes related to the exposure condition which you have. So an exposure condition and the desired service life. But this table here is just a rough idea for you to, to, to guide you on how to how to use this resistivity uh, you know uh, to, as, uh, to assess or to define the uh, quality of the concrete. But in addition to this, you should also try to link uh, this to the uh, specific exposure condition to which the concrete will be exposed and also the desired service life. So some um, uh, sort of quantitative estimate is required, uh, but still this gives a good uh, starting point. Now this is some more examples to show how this resistivity test is done. You can see on the left side it is done on a co asphalt uh, pavement, uh, concrete pavement uh, where you can see uh, you know even on a large area if you want to cover you can still do this um, the, and uh, the thumb rule is the higher the resistivity the lower the corrosion rate. Now once you do this test on a large surface area you can actually create a contour plot uh, of surface re electrical resistivity and then we can say okay there are some region with low resistivity and some with high resistivity and then we have to take care of the regions with low resistivity uh, and there could be a probability of higher corrosion uh, in those locations. So this, this uh, graph which I mean a uh, chart which is developed by Rutgers University you can see more details but something like this is very useful for uh, a quick assessment of large uh, you know a surface area if you want to see uh, how good the quality of the concrete is. 
Now what are the merits and demerits of this uh, test? Uh, for merits we can say that this is low to medium level of because it the uh, it is not really much complex to do this test. You take this con uh, in concrete surface you put the probe on that and you take the reading directly um, you know you can get the test results. So, not much of uh, you know uh, skill level required is not very uh, high uh, then testing is repeatable and with uh, low means the uh, if the uh, quality of the uh, conditioning of the testing surface or the concrete you know if you can maintain that then the test can give you a good uh, repeatability and the uh, that means the error in the test results could be uh, much low, uh, low or the scatter of the test results which you get could, or could be much uh, small. Now, what are the demerits? Demerits is how to interpret the data. It becomes sometimes challenging because it is impacted by a number of uh, parameters including environmental parameters for example, the moisture condition, salt content, porosity because all these influences the uh, you know ability of the concrete uh, you know the, the electrical resistance of the concrete. If it is more porous then the resistance will be less. If you have salt content again that means a lot of ions present in the uh, free ions present in the concrete that will also reduce the resistivity. So, all these have to be considered while uh, interpreting the data which you get and um, the measurements are influenced by if there are coatings or overlays. If you are talking about asphalt road there could be bitumen overlay. So, you cannot really uh, you know take the measurement on the under concrete underneath when you have a layer of bitumen on top. So, you might these are the uh, some of the challenges associated and also if you are if you have coating on the uh, concrete surface like uh, just took a representative image here. If you have a paint on the concrete surface you have to really uh, because the paint will also provide some good resistance and uh, that should not influence the assessment of the concrete resistivity. So, you have to make sure that the wherever you are placing the probe it is really actually you are placing the probe on the uh, exposed concrete surface as it is shown in the uh, cube over there. There cannot be any coating uh, or an insulating layer on the concrete surface. Another test which is very useful uh, uh, is oxygen permeability index test. Uh, now, it is also in many of the standards including uh, Indian standard it is going to come very soon. Um, now, the uh, oxygen what is there in this test you can see on the right side there is a test cylinder and a gas cylinder which is the oxygen gas cylinder and you have the specimens like this. So, essentially the idea is you have a pressure cell which is this and over here you have a dried concrete sample. Basically, these concrete specimen which is shown uh, the disc like specimen which is shown on the bottom right. You prepare a specimen like that and then close the pressure cell, pressure cylinder uh, you know, that is the end uh, pressure vessel here you can say it is containing oxygen and then you pump in oxygen into the pressure cell, close it and uh, close the valve here and then uh, you see how much uh, air can leak through uh, you know leak through the concrete cap. So, the cylinder the concrete cylinder which is made is essentially used to close used to close the pressure cell like a cap only ok. So, the uh, if there is a really pressure release happening this can be measured using the pressure gauge here and if the release is more that means the concrete is more porous. If the pressure release is less, uh, the rate of pressure release is less, then that means the concrete is much more compact or uh, you know uh, more uh, impermeable. So, that is how the concrete sorry uh, the uh, oxygen permeability index can be determined. Now, uh, based on the test results which we get, we get a coefficient of uh, uh, permeability and then from that we get 
OPI or oxygen permeability index. Now, once you get the oxygen permeability index, this can be related again to the quality, general quality of the concrete. You can say if the test result index is more than 10, then I can say the concrete is very good, uh, then good, poor, very poor. So, for different categories you can uh, uh, you know assigned to the uh, various concretes. Again, this is a good test and it has been uh, you know shown to be uh, having very good correlation with uh, carbonation uh, rate or carbonation depth especially in uh, you know uh, Portland cement systems. So, what are the merits and demerits? So, merit is it has good correlation with carbonation front and it does not really alter uh, the uh, composition or microstructure of the uh, the concrete system. In other words, during the test, you don't really change the uh, concrete, uh, or you don't really induce ch microstructural changes in the concrete. And then useful to assess the state of compaction, how compact the concrete is. Is there any bleed voids or other channels or pathways uh, through which uh, you know air can get released? Uh, and the degree of interconnectivity of pore structure, because the all these uh, you know can be assessed uh, in a rough way, uh, you know using this particular uh, test. Now, what are the demerits? Demerits, it's very sensitive to macro voids. If there is any crack in the concrete, or if there are any macro void, large voids, then uh, there will be a significant drop in the uh, pressure, and that will probably indicate that the concrete is very bad, but that bad that is mainly because there is a presence of a particular crack uh, or a macro void which may not be the case for the entire uh, concrete system which you are talking. Because here you are essentially looking at a material property of the uh, bulk uh, concrete. So, this presence of such cracks and macro voids in the specimen. Uh, should not be influencing the test result. So, that is one demerit or the best way to get over this is you make sure that the specimen which you are preparing has no macro voids or cracks in it. And so, that is why it is sensitive to the preparation of the specimen. Now, it is difficult to conduct this test for concrete having very high uh, you know or very good uh, microstructure. Uh, high performance concrete because then uh, you are in the uh, greater than 10 uh, OPI uh, you will come into that range. So, you know uh, the finer categorization becomes a little bit difficult, but you can say all this concretes comes into uh, that category of very uh, good. Now, another uh, test or important thing is carbonation especially when we are talking about uh, you know today's concrete there is a, a concern about you know uh, concretes with uh, supplementary cementitious materials might get might have higher carbonation etc but we have to really uh, test them uh, before concluding on such uh, test uh, such observations which are mostly based on uh, short term uh, test results so here i am going to show a relationship between a short term uh, or accelerated test and a natural carbonation test. So, you can uh, we uh, you know we can see here uh, uh, two sets one is sheltered and unsheltered. Why we did this? Uh, why it is important to show you this as you can see here this is a sheltered there are specimens inside this small uh, box and then the unsheltered specimen because this creates a difference in the moisture condition. Uh, and the carbonation is very much influenced by the moisture condition inside the concrete. So, in the sheltered case and unsheltered case you can really have a different uh, you know rate of carbonation. Uh, in the case of a sheltered case especially in tropical environment you will see that the carbonation is much more than what you could observe in a unsheltered case where the concrete gets dried also. Uh, very fast. Now, the graph at the bottom two graphs it shows how we can use the accelerated test to assess the long term natural carbonation uh, per, uh, performance of concrete in long term uh, nat, uh, carbonation. Now, you see here uh, from in the graphs you can see that 
these are natural and then these are accelerated. So, if we know the accelerated test result, you can easily correlate that to uh, a natural test result. So, you can see here also again um, an equation which shows basically that you know there is a uh, if you have an accelerated test result which is on the right side and uh, in the sheltered and this two equations are for unsheltered and sheltered case. If you have the point is if you can get the accelerated test result which takes usually about let us say 4 months and from that you can estimate how good that concrete will be in if exposed to uh, natural carbonation if subjected to natural carbonation. So, in let us look at this example here in the bottom case which is uh, for natural case and sheltered case. You can say that uh, you know the coefficient is almost 0.5 of the uh, uh, case uh, 0.5 of the accelerated carbonation uh, coefficient. Why this is important? Because if you talk about natural carbonation, it takes very long time, many years to do the test. So, nobody would want to wait for that long. So, you have to have something which is uh, which can be uh, which can give you results in very short time, let us say 4 months. So, it is a good test uh, to adopt. More details are provided in this RILEM. Uh, you know technical committee 56. Now, one thing uh, to you know when people test uh, carbonation on concrete, uh, I usually this phenophthalene test is done which is basically you spray the phenophthalene indicator on to a fractured specimen uh, as you see and then you look at the pink color right. In the previous slide also I showed this, this is basically that pink color which I am talking about and you see that interior of the concrete is more pink than the uh, peripheral region. That means, in this particular specimen this much region is uh, highly carbonated and as you go inward there is less carbonation. So, it is a good test phenophthalene indicator and then uh, here uh, I am trying to show you how the how, uh, how if you are actually uh, saw cutting a specimen and if you are actually fracturing a specimen these two will actually give you different result uh, yeah, you know. So, the test method or the procedure will have an influence on the test result which you get which is not a good, a good thing. So, you have to know that or make sure that so cutting is not done when you talk about uh, you, know, ob, you know when you talk about testing uh, carbonation testing in the field. Now, the first picture is a fractured specimen where you can see very clearly this much region is carbonated and whereas in the same same specimen or you know from the other side of the same specimen when we did uh, sorry this is a saw cut specimen as you can see here uh, it is not very clear on the image, but this region here is actually saw cut. So, what happen, happens when you saw cut is you know the uh, blade, this, the blade itself smears the powder and it spreads this powder in the entire surface which when you after that when you spray the phenophthalene indicator onto it, uh, you really cannot uh, see because there is a lot of cross contamination uh, from point to point happening on that specimen. So, point from this slide is that you have to fracture the specimen. Uh, you can even take a, a core and then do a split, uh, they take the core and split into half and then spray the phenophthalene indicator on uh, the, uh, the fractured surface. That is also very good to or very easy to do, uh, but in whatever be the case you should not uh, you know uh, adopt this saw cutting of the specimen. So, this is not a good idea to uh, practice that will give you a, a, you know misleading information. Now, uh, this there are also other uh, you know uh, indicators available like a rainbow indicator, phenophthalene indicator is widely used which gives this uh, you know change in color from about uh, you know around 9 uh, you will see a change in color, but if you are talking about rainbow indicator then you can also get a wide range you know whether you can see whether the pH is at 13 or 11, 9, but 
it is not very easy to distinguish between these colors, but it uh, you know if uh, some if uh, somebody is really really uh, you know want to see at exactly what is the pH this is one way to uh, go for. And uh, water permeability test is another test which is uh, widely used to assess uh, concrete quality. Mainly this measures the resistance of concrete against penetration of water uh, when there is a pressure and you know it is looking at the uh, permeability. Permeability is mainly with the, the driving force is the pressure. Okay. So, if you are talking about a dam structure or any water retaining structure you will have a hydrostatic pressure or if you are looking at uh, you know a substructure which is uh, you know exposed to or in the water table is above the concrete level then also you might have uh, some uh, pressure uh, exerted onto the concrete surface in, excuse me, in such cases this is uh, very good. Now, test is done uh, at about uh, you know 28 and 35 days and this is the pressure which you apply and then what you look at is how much uh, what is the penetration of water into the concrete as you see in this picture here you can see that. So, this much region uh, you can see a color difference and that indicates the presence of water or the penetration of water and how much it has penetrated. So, if you have multiple concretes with different uh, penetration depth then you can say okay, concrete A is better than concrete B uh, something like that. What is the merit? It is very simple test easier to do and uh, gives broader picture of moisture transport properties. Demerit is uh, you have to have a uh, core specimen uh, and also then uh, the equipment which you need to uh, which you, which you need uh, needs an air compressor because you are talking about pressure. But you know these are all uh, you know part of the facility itself. Uh, so really there is not much of demerits, but uh, it is a very good test uh, to adopt for assessing the uh, you know permeability water permeability of uh, concrete. Now, another mechanism which happens when you talk about moisture is uh, sorption. Okay. So, as you see in the picture on the bottom right, you can see that a concrete column and the rebar at the, the stirrup at the bottom of the concrete uh, column is actually corroding very uh, severely. But in, in this particular column, there is no other space which, which experience uh, corrosion. So, very clearly this has something to do with the concrete with, because it is just coming out of the uh, ground and that is where you have uh, corrosion mainly because of the capillary suction, uh, you know the suction of moisture from the ground uh, and then uh, it, it keeps the moisture available uh, for corrosion reaction to uh, happen. And then so this is something which uh, need to be addressed uh, also. So, you the type of concrete which you use if it is highly resistant against uh, uh, sorption then maybe that is one way to decide on the type of concrete and so we can actually avoid this kind of problems in our structures. Now, this is a classification criteria where uh, the uh, water sorptivity uh, uh, if uh, you know different ranges and then which is then related to the quality of the uh, concrete. Okay. Now, how to do this you know uh, you can take cores of the specimen and then basically a small tray in which the specimens are uh, you know kept with a few millimeter from the bottom uh, which is in, uh, in touch with the uh, solution and then you see uh, the change in the weight of the uh, four uh, concrete uh, slices or you know disc which you see on the picture on the top right and then you look at the weight change and if it is able to, if the weight mass if the change in the weight or uh, mass is more then that means more water has been uh, you know absorbed or um, you know is sucked into the uh, concrete which is not a good idea so the uh, the amount of water which is sucked into the concrete should be low that means the concrete is of high uh, quality. Merits, uh, it simulates a natural condition and then can be performed on cores which are ex actually extracted from the structure. 
okay and you can also do it on specimens before even construction if you want to assess the quality of a particular mixture proportion you can do that also and then demerit it is again uh, sensitive to macro voids and cracks like we discussed in the case of oxygen permeability and it is very sensitive to, to the microstructural properties, pore structure. Uh, pore distribution, not only the total porosity, but how the pores are distributed and connected. So, all that uh, you know uh, is it the test is sensitive to that and it is a semi destructive test. And then another test is rapid chloride penetration test, where you again uh, take a concrete cylinder uh, as you see here, a concrete cylinder, and then uh, there are two cells on either side of the cylinder. One cell is with the sodium chloride solution, the other cell is with the sodium hydroxide solution and then you connect it to a power source uh, when you apply 60 volt essentially what happens is it drives the chloride ions from in this picture from the left side to the right side the chloride ion is uh, yeah from the left to right the chloride ion moves and uh, on the uh, yeah. So, the negatively charged ions in the left side cell which is the chloride ions it moves or gets transported into the concrete and uh, then one problem with uh, then based on that the what you actually measure is the charge passed. So, you have a power source connected and then you have this uh, chloride movement and then you measure how much charge uh, or electrical charge is passed during the test and then um, you know you apply this current for about 6 hours and then you measure the ch charge passed and then you can relate that amount of charge passed to the permeability of the uh, concrete. If it is very uh, large number of uh, uh, charge large uh, you know char number of charge passed then that let us say in this case greater than 4000 then the permeability is very high that means the concrete quality is very low. Okay, so, in this table here the higher the permeability that means the quality of concrete is not good. So, if you have a concrete which is let us say in uh, less than 1000 or less than 100 this range then you can say the concrete quality is very very uh, good. And on top of this uh, the same specimen after the testing you can take and then you can actually uh, take the, the disc which is used for this uh, RCPT test, RCPT is rapid chloride penetration test, I am going to write it here RCPT. Okay. So, the same specimen can be taken after the test is done, you know the uh, charge passed and on top if you want to know what is the actual penetration depth of chlorides or how much uh, what is the depth of penetration of chlorides, you can actually take the cylinder split into half by splitting and you can then spray silver nitrate solution on silver uh, uh, nitrate solution on to the fractured surface and if there are chlorides it will react with the silver nitrate and then form silver chloride. So, the white patch which you see on the cylinder indicates the depth indicates the presence of silver chloride that means approximately up to about this depth in the yellow box you have that much of uh, chloride penetration. So, this gives a very visual uh, you know assessment of the depth of penetration of chloride or how, uh, how good the concrete is resistant to the uh, penetration of chloride. So, very good uh, you know test because there is no uh, calculation or anything which is involved you can directly see what is happening okay? that is a good indicator. Now, what are the merits widely used test? Uh, you know and then it gives a qualitative classification of concrete, but some demerits of this test is if you have like there are multiple uh, mechanisms act together and in this particular test you uh, the migration is also there and then if you have a large uh, you know the different types of chemicals present in the concrete then uh, there is a uh, problem. Uh, because you do not know whether the test result is actually totally, I am talking about the RCPT test, I am not talking about the uh, silver chloride uh, test which uh, silver nitrate test which I just showed you in the previous slide. This is mainly on the uh, assessment uh, based on the charge or the coulombs 
uh, you know that is the demerit I am talking about here. So, the charge passed is related to all the ions in the pore solution and not only the chloride ions. If you have some other negatively charged ions in the concrete that may also get transported when you apply that 60 volts and uh, what will happen is the charge passed is uh, you know a combined if based on the combined effect of all the negatively charged ions and not only the uh, uh, chloride ions. And also when you have high voltage 60 volts there could be an increase in the temperature uh, especially the uh, quality is uh, low and then this will also accelerate ionic movement. So, these are all other complexities other associated uh, with this uh, test uh, RCPT test um, and if the assessment is based on purely on the uh, coulombs uh, you know the charge passed you have to be a little bit cautious before concluding. So, and it may not be valid for concrete with SEMs or uh, corrosion inhibitors because there are the, the chemistry is much more uh, complex in that case and uh, especially if you have fibers in your concrete we have seen test reports which shows RCPT test on fiber reinforced concrete which is not a good idea uh, to do because you will have let us say picture here on the bottom right I am showing a picture which shows a, a small fiber uh, you can see. So, what happens is imagine you are taking a concrete specimen and that specimen ha is something like this. If the specimen is something like that and which has a fiber which is aligned uh, to the axis of the cylinder or if it is reaching from one end of the cylinder one surface of the cylinder to the other surface then definitely the ions will pass through the interface between the fiber and the, uh, the concrete. So, that gives an easy pathway for the chloride to penetrate. Uh, so, which is not uh, something which uh, is uh, good especially when you apply the voltage in this test you apply the voltage, but in reality you do not apply the voltage. So, and also in this test you are uh, talking about assessment based on uh, a small disc where in reality you are talking about large uh, concrete the uh, you know travel of uh, traveling of this uh, chloride through a larger depth also depending on the type of structure you are talking. Now, uh, rapid chloride penetration test this is also a a very fast test which can be used to assess the uh, chloride migration uh, properties especially the non steady state migration coefficient. And here in this test you have uh, you know a, a tank like this you can see and then you have this item number 4 in the uh, sketch is the concrete cylinder and the item number 5 you is uh, a mesh which is kept on the one on one surface of the cylinder and then I uh, you know at the bottom of the cylinder item number uh, this one you you have another mesh which is connected to the power source and then you uh, supply the current and then uh, eventually you can measure the uh, chloride migration coefficient and make sure that when you this mesh at the bottom of the cylinder uh, there should be sufficient more, you know liquid available or electrolyte available over here. So, that uh, there is no air trapped and that is one reason why the cylinder is kept in an inclined form. So, that whatever there will be no air trapped at the bottom of the cylinder. So, it is a, a finely designed uh, test setup and uh, also uh, you know something uh, which you have to uh, worry about is you know in this which is actually evident in this particular uh, sample here you can see that uh, something which you should not be uh, doing. See the, the concrete surface available for the migration to happen uh, should not should be uh, as you include in the calculations right. So, you can see here there is this uh, epo uh, the silicon which is applied it is actually smeared uh, on the concrete surface which is not a good thing it, it should only be sealing the, uh, the the gap between the uh, mold and the cylinder not the it should not be smeared on the concrete surface. So, uh, this concrete surface should not be this this portion should be uh, 
free from uh, you know this uh, silicon. So, the preparation of the specimen is also very very important and in all these tests you know the specimen preparation plays a significant role. If you do not do a good job in specimen preparation uh, the results which you get might get altered uh, because of the preparation or the you know poor quality preparation. So, these are all very very important uh, to uh, you know think when you do experiments. Okay. Even here you can see that you know only this much portion is available for the migration to happen whereas, you know some region here is actually uh, covered by the uh, silicon cock. So, quality of specimen preparation is very very important and uh, that also places if it is not well taken care this will change the test results which you get and you might make uh, wrong conclusions on your uh, test. Now, uh, here also you can see penetration of uh, chloride into the concrete and the same uh, silver uh, nitrate test uh, which I explained earlier few slides ago can be repeated even on this uh, concrete and that is what you see here uh, you know after the test you can fracture the specimen and then spray silver nitrate and see what is the actual uh, penetration depth uh, of chlorides. And here is a comparison where uh, the non steady state migration coefficient is linked to the concrete quality. Again let me emphasize when you look at these tables which are linking a particular uh, property transport property to the concrete quality make sure that the exposure condition the specific exposure condition where the concrete will be uh, used and the desired service life both these parameters must also be uh, you know considered while be or before telling the concrete before giving a, a name like this or a category very good good normal poor to the concrete it is very very important to consider the exposure condition and the, the specific exposure condition and the desired service life. Merits of this uh, rapid chloride migration test, it reduces the problem related to the heat of specimen as you uh, have it in the case of RCPT because here the voltage we apply is determined based on uh, the initial test which we do and then the amount the it is also the voltage is much lower than uh, the 60 volt which you apply in uh, rapid chloride permeability test. And the variation in the test result is also much less in this case as compared to RCPT. But there are of course, uh, some demerits uh, you know if you have a conductive materials like fibers or something it will affect the test which we should not anyway practice. And then many transport mechanisms act together like in the case of RCPT. And uh, quantity of sodium chloride solution. These are all small things, but I just wanted to mention uh, all this also uh, when you uh, cite the demerits. And uh, you need to have actual cylinders to be tested. So, we can say it is destructive or semi, semi destructive in nature. Um, and also you cannot reuse this concrete cylinders for any other test. For example, if you are talking about oxygen permeability test, you can actually use that specimen for other tests even after the uh, test. But uh, when you talk about chloride, uh, you know, penetration test or uh, you know, rapid chloride migration test, you cannot reuse those uh, specimens again for anything else because the test procedure itself contaminates the uh, chloride and cannot be applied on site because you have to take the power source there. But you can always take a core from the site and bring the core specimen to the lab and then do this ok, do this test. Now, service life uh, you know when you talk about service life estimation there are different parameters diffusion coefficient of chloride, carbonation coefficient, chloride threshold, pH threshold these four things matter a lot. Here we are going to look at in this press, uh, lecture we are going to talk about we talked about diffusion chloride and then we talked about uh, carbonation coefficient, we talked about chloride threshold, we did not talk about pH threshold, but we assume that it is equal to about uh, 9 for most cases. Now, uh, what happens in the case of uh, you know, corrosion initiation? 
or uh, you know during the service life initially you have we already covered this in the second or third lecture. Uh, so, during the initiation phase you have the chloride from the surface penetrating into the concrete and it eventually reaches the uh, steel surface and initiates corrosion. So, chloride threshold is also a very important parameter and diffusion coefficient of chloride in that particular concrete is also very important parameter uh, to estimate when the initiation will happen or when the concrete will start corroding. So, chloride diffusion coefficient is something very important to estimate. As you see on the picture here, you can see an, an instrument which is a profile grinder uh, which is attached to the uh, wall surface. So, uh, why I showed this picture is it, it really tells that you can actually take powder from the concrete surface and you take the powder and then do a chemical test in the lab and then that will help you to tell how much chloride uh, is present at different depth within the concrete. So, as you see here in the graph here, the depth from the exposed surface and the chloride concentration. So, this graph will help you in determining the diffusion coefficient if you know the time of exposure and the surface uh, conditions etcetera. So, but this graph will really help in determining the diffusion coefficient of the uh, chloride diffusion coefficient of concrete. So, in fact, in uh, we, we can do this on specimens which uh, you know any large pro any project for that matter if it is already exposed to chloride environment for some time. So, that you know the time and then you can extract a core specimen from the structure. This is uh, just to show you actually a bridge uh, you know a, a monorail a bridge structure and then you get the core specimens from the uh, structure and then you do a test uh, basically uh, you can either slice the concrete or uh, you know take powder at different depths in the uh, core specimen and then develop this uh, profile or and then from that you can determine diffusion coefficient of the uh, concrete. Yeah, I was this was just to show that there even you can do a slicing at different level. This is an example a graph showing that this uh, diffusion coefficient could be or the, uh, the profile could be different uh, depending on the type of concrete which you use and you can see here the black one is an OPC mix and the red one is a fly ash mix and the green one is an LC3 mix and from this data we can uh, you use this uh, fixed law of second law of diffusion and then eventually come up with what is the uh, diffusion coefficient of the concrete. And once you know the diffusion coefficient, uh, then you can really estimate the uh, service life uh, of concrete structure. This is just to show the difference in the diffusion coefficient of different uh, concretes. As you see here, if you are talking about an M30 concrete, uh, fly ash and uh, LC3 systems or the systems with supplementary cementitious systems uh, can have very low diffusion coefficient if it is properly mixed and made. And even in M50 case you can see significant reduction and in a, a replacement mix also uh, with the common mix design. So, the idea of this graph is to show you that OPC mixes uh, perform much worse than the corresponding uh, mixes with fly ash or LC3. When I say corresponding, I am talking about concrete with similar strength grade uh, and in the third uh, set here, it is basically looking at concrete with similar mix design, not necessarily of same strength grade. But if you are talking to a structural engineer and if you are saying that okay, I want to use fly ash or slag or silica fume or any other concrete for that matter they would want a concrete which will have similar strength grade, but with different materials. So, that is the importance of this study here, where we looked at uh, M30 and M50 uh, type concrete and we very clearly see that for the same strength grade, you can have much better quality uh, concrete by the use of SEMs. And when I say better quality, uh, here I am meaning a lower diffusion coefficient, that is the key point here. Now, uh, in the previous slide, uh, back to back slide, I showed that you know you can get this profile like the we said that you know depth, depth and then chloride concentration 
and we show a graph something like this and this graph you know at different depths on the x axis if you take you can get this either by grinding the uh, you know by profiling a uh, profile can be obtained by grinding powder from the concrete specimen and if you do not have a grinding tool you can also take slices from the concrete specimen and then uh, uh, you know the uh, determine the chloride concentration in each of these slices as shown here A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I all these slides uh, slices you can take and then you estimate the concentration of chloride in each of the slice. Yes, the when you go for slice it may not be a perfect test as you compare to uh, grinding because in the case of slice uh, you know getting uh, you know the actual chloride concentration for every millimeter depth may be very difficult, but which can be easily obtainable if you are talking about a profile grinder where you can get uh, you know the powder from every millimeter if required. So, it, uh, the one shown on the right side is a more sophisticated way of doing it and one shown on this left side is uh, you know less sophisticated way of uh, getting chloride profiles. Now, we can also uh, do microstructural assessment uh, you know of concrete you can get the concrete specimen. Let us say you have a case where uh, you know you see an unexpected cracking after some period of time. Uh, in the concrete structure and then you want to know what is the reason for that cracking. So, where you know uh, if you want to really investigate you have to look at what changes have happened in the microstructure of the concrete and so you have to look at uh, phase changes in the microstructure is there any specific elements which are present in the concrete which was probably not there in the beginning uh, you know. Uh, and then uh, you know something from the external environment penetrated into the concrete and then so all these can be assessed and also you can look at the crystal shape and pattern. So, you can take the core specimen uh, and then make smaller specimens and then do a microstructural study and then which can probably tell you what type of chemicals are present in the concrete and which can then be related to the uh, degradation mechanism uh, which we already discussed in our previous module. And now basically from those information uh, you know you can look at if the for example, uh, one case I will tell here is if you are talking about a delayed ettringite formation DEF. So, we can see if there is ettringite present in the concrete pro and maybe that you can relate that to the uh, DEF and then looking at the type of cracking all these different information have to be put together and then we can conclude on what went wrong in the uh, concrete systems. And there is a very detailed course full course on this uh, how to characterize uh, the construction materials and system offered by Professor Manu Santanam and uh, Dr. Piyush Chaursali. So, that is uh, something interesting if you are more interested in microstructure assessment. And then uh, looking at the mechanical properties until now we were talking about durability related test and of course, uh, compressive strength is there I am not covering that here, but uh, you know split tensile ten strength. Uh, typically we say that uh, you know the tensile strength or split tensile strength of concrete is about 10 percent of the compressive strength and how do we do you take a core and then you try to split the core into half as you see in the picture here on the right you can see that there is a crack which is happening at the center and that uh, you know splits into half and then from that you can say what is the based on the load applied uh, you can get the uh, split tensile strength. This is a flexural uh, strength test especially becoming more and more important when we talk about uh, fiber reinforced concrete and things like that where you have to get the toughness characteristics also. And uh, this is an example how the flexor strength can be uh, related to the uh, compressive strength of concrete. As you see on this graph this is square root of the compressive strength. So, you get a uh, straight line. So, if you are actually plotting with compressive strength versus modulus of rupture or flexor strength then you will get a uh, you know square root uh, curve. Okay. Uh, to summarize uh, these uh, test methods uh, 
uh, to evaluate concrete durability and mechanical properties were discussed. We looked at uh, resistivity, electrical resistivity of concrete, permeability of oxygen through the concrete and looked at water permeability, chloride permeability uh, and then uh, accelerated carbonation test and split and soil strength, flexural strength, all these we discussed. There are the, you know specified test methods available. This is a very good handbook where various uh, durability related tests have been put together. So, this handbook uh, you know is available if you are interested you can get it from uh, you know contact through this email contact ICI Indian Concrete Institute through this email. The good thing about this handbook is it gives uh, all the information related to the principles behind various tests and uh, how the tests can be done more details and then also uh, how what are the things to uh, look at when you actually do you know critical evaluation of uh, various tests and how this test can be this the test results can be used for design purposes. So, all that is covered in this handbook I think it is a very good collection uh, of uh, information uh, and uh, these are the references which were used to make this uh, lecture note uh, and in the next uh, lecture uh, we will uh, two slides here in the next lecture we will look at how to assess the corrosion properties or uh, you know corrosion and its uh, properties uh, of steel uh, in concrete.